Hello, um, my name is Peter Voss. Um, I work for the city of Genk. I'm the strategic coordinator of the energy and climate policy of the city of Genk. And today I'm going to tell you something about our experiences with uh, reflexive monitoring. One of the big projects we're working on also within the context of the European project of connecting nature it's the Steamer Valley. It's the redevelopment of a, of a river valley that um, flows through our entire city. It's an eight kilometer long um, river valley. And we would like to redevelop this city, uh, this river valley, because we believe it has a large potential in order to adapt our city and protect our city to the upcoming, upcoming climate change. We follow some kind of reconnection strategy in which we would like to restore the connections um, within the triangle of people, nature and entrepreneurship. And for doing so, we have adopted the solution concept of, of nature-based uh, solutions. Why we are doing this? We are doing this because we believe that there is a very big challenge in, in, in tackling important urban challenges like the climate challenge. Um, and it's, it's, it's a bit visualized here by this, by this figure. So on the one hand, there is a lot of, of ambitions on political level and, and other levels. You have, the, for example, the Paris Agreements for Climate. You have the SDGs from the United Nations. We have a lot of visions at, at national level, but also and ambitions at national level, but also at local level. And on the other side of the spectrum, um, we also have a... Yeah, a, a, a variety of, of, of actions that we would like to take in order to, in order to um, tackle these challenges. But despite the ambitions and despite the, the numerous actions, we see that the, the impact is, is it's, it's too low or not, or not um, fast enough. And that's why we believe that there is some kind of missing link in between. And that's, that's, why we have built, um, we have shaped our steamer uh, redevelopment program as a real urban transformation um, program. And we have explored to which ingredients are really needed in order to have such a real urban transformation uh, program. And we believe that in order to build up this urban transformation capacity, you need a list of things to be included in your, in your program and your projects. They are listed on the slides. First of all, it's transition management, which guarantees some kind of systemic approach solving the real problems. It's innovation management, which feeds your process with, with a lot of innovations. It can be financial innovation, business model innovation, technical innovation, process innovation, all types of innovation. It's with finance because um, there's a lot of money needed, so you need good financing strategies. Um, and uh, the fourth element listed here is its coalition management. We work in a quadruple helix model, so you need good management techniques in order to be able to manage or govern this, um, this quadruple or quintuple helix um, uh, within our project. Those are four very important ingredients, but we have learned that a fourth or a fifth element that somehow uh, overarches these these other four arguments or somehow uh, unites them it's it's to have a, a very well defined and an elaborate learning process and um, it's here that we use the technique of, of reflexive monitoring to set up a good learning process um, that can help us to shape or, or to govern our urban transformation uh, program but before going into detail, I would like to go um, one step back and make a reference to the Greek mythology um, that's depicted here, and more specifically to the, the Greek gods of time. Um, so in ancient Greece, you had two gods for the concept of time. One that's more well known in, in, in current days, that's the god Kronos, and one's one that is uh, less known at present, that's the god Kairos. The god Kronos, that's the god of what they call the measurable time. It's the god 
that defines the seconds, the, 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 the hours, the minutes and the passing of time. Um, taking this back metaphorically to the, the urban projects that, that we do, you could say that Kronos is the god of project management, the god that helps you to, to deliver your projects, to meet your deadlines and all these kind of things. On the other hand, you have another um, god for time in, 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 in the Greek mythology. It's the god Kairos, and that's they define it as the god of the of, of, of the right moment, the god that helps you to somehow um, take time to do things in the right way, to reflect on what you're doing, and in that way, it's the god that somehow helps you to connect the present time with also the past, but also with, with the future or the desirable future that you would like to that you would like to go to. And in this way, this God is it's more the God of reflection and thereby you could say, if you again metaphorically would like to link it to, 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 to the things that we are doing, you could say it's the God of the learning process, it's the God that's related to reflexive um, to reflexive monitoring. So for the organization of our learning process, we use the technique of, of reflexive um, monitoring. And in order to fully appreciate this, it's, it's good to realize um, that we basically have two parallel processes. Like first of all, we have a more Kronos inspired process in which we really do the project management. Um, thereby we focus on the on the deadlines on deliverables and these kind of stuff and we have a frequency of meeting like every two weeks in order to be able to have a good follow up of the all the things that that we do next to this we have a more kairos um, inspired approach and that's our our, our learning process it's at a a, a lesser time frequency so we meet um, every two months so we have a learning cyclus, cyclus of, of, of two months and within this two months um, at the end of this two months we meet and then we reflect on the past two months and we discuss we do some kind of systemic reflection on what has happened during these um, past two months we try to come up with learning questions and we also try to derive uh, learning lessons. Um, this really helps um, to, to also have um, to keep our strategy on track. So while, while our project management approach, the more Kronos based approach, helps us to strive for operational excellence, we believe that our more Kairos based approach, our learning process, helps us to strive for, for strategic excellence. And this also helps to build up the urban transformation capacity within our organization because after a while, after a few learning cycles, for example, after every six months, we then have some kind of eye-opener workshop, we call it, with um, the top management of our city and also with the mayor and the deputy mayor of our city. And in these eye-opener workshops, we share the most important learning lessons or the most important learning questions that we have that come out of our, um, of our um, learning cycle, such that it enables us also to do some organizational learning and also to try to, 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 to influence the organization based upon the learning lessons that come, come out of, of our exemplar. Um, and we believe that, that this way it helps us as an organization to build up this urban transformation capacity. Um, and we believe that, that, that reflexive monitoring is, is a technique that can be very helpful to, to organize and structure this learning process for this purpose. So this, in a nutshell, more or less, is how we try to apply um, the reflexive monitoring technique as, as a means to organize a, a, a well-designed learning process um, within our organization. Thank you very much.